finally, I can use settings to create a custom experience on Gmail for myself. So the first thing we can look at is creating a signature. You'll notice that when I sent my emails, I had a nice signature there with my email address, what I do, uh, where the school is, etc. You can make one like this too, just by clicking on uh, this cog wheel right here, going to settings. You'll be in general, there's a lot of settings and settings, but uh, you'll be in general. You can, first of all, uh, your default text style, which is mine, mine is blue, and in Garamon looks like this. It's also a little bit bigger than most, because I don't like to be squinting all the time, because we look at emails so often. Um, and then finally, down here is a signature. Now you can have no signature, or you can make your signature. You can customize your signature based on whatever font you want. You can make the font big or small. I recommend for a signature your font's relatively small. There's no reason to have a big one. You can bold italicize it, pretty much anything you want to do in, from the actual Google Docs suite you can do in here to make this. You can also choose whether you insert the signature before the quoted text and replies and remove the line that precedes it. That means if I type a response, is it going to show up below my response or is it going to show up below the entire thing? And I like to, I prefer to do that. Um, there are various other things on this as well. Vacation responder isn't necessary for you guys. If you're on summer break, your teachers won't really be emailing you or Christmas break, but I guess it's there as well. Going back to more settings, we can use markers. I use markers all the time. You can see here that markers are right here. They're called stars in this particular context. I use these three markers. I used to use a lot more, but it got confusing. So. You'll see here that the ones you want to have in use, you can drag up here. If you don't want them in use, you can put them back to not in use. So what happens is that when I first click on something, it's going to say a yellow explanation, exclamation point for me. What that means to me is that it's a task that I need to get done or something I need to respond to. If it's blue with an I, that means to me it's informative. It might be an event that's coming up or a schedule that's coming up, but I don't need to attend to it right away until that day. And finally, it might be a green check mark, which means I have responded or I have done this. I just need to wait to remove this after I follow up with that person. A lot of people use color of stars. For example, in eighth grade science, green might be science. So you could use a green star there to denote that it is science. Some people use this as in you need to forward this or something needs to happen. I used to use this question mark as in what does something mean if a teacher sends me something or I get something or I need to inquire about something else I might put a question mark but I had so many different star things up here at one point it was just a little bit inefficient. So what I'll do is I'll go down here to my email. You'll see here that Mr. Sheeman is out of the office. So let's go down to the sample video. Now if Mr. Fester sent me this sample video, it's really important, I need to look at it soon, but I just can't do it right now, I'm gonna push one click. If I click again, it's gonna go away. If I click twice on it, it's gonna to go to I, which means that, hey, this is great, I looked at it, it's information that I'm gonna to need to do for the future, so I'm gonna have this I here so it doesn't go away, and I can click on it and it goes away. If I click on it three times, that's gonna to go to my third one, and say, yep, done, I might just be waiting to follow up with him or something like that, and then I can click on it and go away. If you don't want it in the inbox, but you want to be able to find it later, but you don't want to have it labeled, you can also click archive. I do that a lot for emails that might be important that I might use later. And then two weeks down the road, if I need it, it's going to be right here under sample video right there, which is fine. Moving on, almost done here. Uh, changing email font, we actually looked at that, and then themes would be the last piece here. I'm going to go down to my cogwheel, and you can go to themes, or you can find themes and settings. Themes is right here, but I'm going to go to settings just for fun, just to do themes, and you can find themes right there, and it says set theme. Now you'll notice that I use the dark theme. The dark theme is right here. I think dark themes are awesome, but you might uh, want flowers or wood, or you might enjoy the beach, so you can just click on that, and it will automatically change everything about that um, to the beach. I don't like light colors because it tends to make these things a little bit confusing, um, but that's one thing you can have. I can go back to set my theme. Um, I can have pictures. I can also add photos as from my photos that I have taken or have on my computer. I used to have the grass one, which was pretty cool because I'm all about the grounding in the grass. 
But again, you get a lot of interesting context context themes, and it just doesn't seem to be that efficient. So for me, I'm always rocking the dark theme here. That's just kind of my jam. Finally, um, one thing I didn't put on here, but that I knew I wanted to talk about is this piece right here. So this is your Google Hangouts. Now, if you're working on a project with someone and you can't actually visit them, you can Google Hangout to make stuff happen. Or if you're making a presentation and you all want to do it at seven o'clock on a Tuesday night, then you can actually Google Hangout with all five of you in your group for free. Let me show you how to do that. So if I want to find someone, I can simply type this in. So let's say I'm looking for a bill. It might be one of those persons and I might add one of those persons to my Google Hangout list right here. Okay. Next up, it's going to pop up and say, hey, let's start a conversation. I might send the invite. I'm not going to send it this time. But in the future then, uh, when I do want to actually put that together, I can send that invite. And what you'll get is something like this. This is one of my friends that from Chile that I communicate with. And if I'm going to video call her to work on something or to talk Spanish or whatever, I can click this camera. If I want to add someone to the group um, and have multiple people there, I can use this. I will say Google Hangouts is quite useful. I did use it myself in grad school. That's what Luther Seminary um, used for all our online classes. It worked really well, so keep that in mind. Anyways, folks, this has been another presentation of G-Talk, where I'm a G, you're G, we're all G, and I hope this gets you G-O-ing where you need to G-O. Toodles.